Hi everybody and welcome back to SBTDT Superbike Track Days Tips. This is uh, the first episode of uh, this series and uh, as normally they say safety first and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about this, to this time. We're going to be talking about safety gears, about what you need to wear when you're on the racetrack but we could say that this episode is uh, a little bit of an hybrid because we're going to be talking about safety gears that can be easily used also on the street. Uh, well, first we start with the helmet. Uh, when you want to go on the racetrack, uh, the main requirement is to have a DOT and a Schnell helmet. Uh, it needs to be approved by both uh, um, requirements. But the main thing that a lot of people is not aware of is that helmets do have an expiration date. That's right, an element can expire. Uh, actually, if you look on the inside, normally you need to lift uh, the inside chin protector and you will find uh, the year of manufacturing. Well, if a helmet is over five years old, it's not considered legal. In fact, uh, some track days organization and uh, all the racing organization, they will not allow racing with a helmet that is more than five years old. So keep this in mind, you need to have a DOT and Chanel helmet and it needs to be approved and it needs to be less than five years old. Uh, as far as the helmet, there are many around. Personally, I feel comfortable with this uh, Suomi. This is already the second one I had. I had a pretty good experience with my first one. I had an accident and I didn't feel anything. My father had the two experiences with the, his Suomis. Both times he hit his head pretty bad and neither time he had any injuries, so I like them, they're very light, they work good, but hey, a lot of people like Sarai, others they like Shoei, whatever you want, it's your head, you need to feel it right. But uh, the main thing is that the helmet alone does not do anything, a helmet alone cannot do miracles. I know that in some states, there is a lot of states that the helmet is mandatory, but what does that mean? Can I put a bathing suit, a pair of flip-flops and go around the street with a helmet in the head? Eh, when you go down, the asphalt on your skin is going to be like a cheese grater on the cheese. It's going to pull out everything. I've seen accidents on the street where people wearing a helmet, they left a red trail on the asphalt. Good about 50, lo 50 feet long. That, that's not working. It doesn't do any good to have just a helmet, so we can use our head and be above the law. What do I mean by being above the law? Well, if the law states that you have to have a helmet on your head, why do they do that? Because they want you to be safe. Are you going to be safe with just a helmet on your head? Definitely not. In fact, when you go on the track, the first thing that they ask after the helmet is a back protector. This is one example. When I used to go around the street, I always used to wear this under my protective jacket. This is a back protector. If I crash, not only I protect my head, but I protect my back. I don't want to end up on four wheels for life. In case you didn't get it, I'm talking about getting, remaining on a wheelchair because you hit your back. This thing can save you, not only from yourself crashing, but from somebody else. I don't care how good of a rider you are, there are the best riders of the world, like Valentino Rossi, they still have crashes. There are too many things that can happen while we're riding. We are humans. We do make accidents. It's part of our nature to make mistakes. And eventually a mistake on the street results in an accident. So we need to prepare ourselves for that. Okay, I know you're probably saying, oh, my body has been riding for 30 years, he never had a crash. Well, you got really lucky, but let's think it this way. While you're riding on the street with your motorcycle, you might go down, and in the moment that you go down, you or your bike can go hit another 10 vehicles that are on the street. Okay, let's reverse the cake. You are on the street and there are all around you usually 10 vehicles, then they can all crash and hit you. That doesn't feel that safe. That's why a friend of mine got saved just by one of these, just identical to this. He was wearing them while he was stopped at a stoplight. A guy with a small truck came right behind him and hit him really hard. Fortunately, this thing smacked against the nose of the car and he said he felt the back protector doing the job. He actually distributed the force all in his back and uh, he saved his life and mainly 
he saved his mobility, he can still walk on his own legs. So a back protector is a key, but if you think about it, all our organs are inside our chest. And that's where something really interesting happens. A friend of mine crashed on the racetrack at a very slow pace. But you know what? He went on his handlebar and he hurt himself. He didn't have one of these. This is a chest protector. It's actually integrated with my back protector, which you will see soon. So I have a back protector and a chest protector. Nicky Aiden saved his life in his MotoGP accident when he high-sided and he landed on the top of his handlebar, right with his chest. These things, they can save you and they're very, very flexible. I mean, it, it doesn't bother you. So this is all safety. But when you go on the racetrack, most of the organizations, they will not require you to have a chest protector. Normally, they just ask you a helmet and a back protector. And then, when you increase your capabilities of moving up from the novice group, you get to the intermediate or advanced, they start requiring also a full leather suit. This is a kangaroo leather suit. It worked really good for me in my two crashes. Uh, kangaroo leather is lighter, thinner, but much more resistant. But, you know, not all the leather suits, they are identical. One feature that some suits don't have are these things, the, the titanium plates. They're not just for looks, they have a very important function. Main function is when you hit, they distribute the force on all your uh, cushion protector, which is under it. But most importantly, this thing slides. When you get down on the asphalt with this thing, this thing slides, it doesn't snap your your uh, shoulder backwards. You will let your body slide. The same happens in my knees. Right now I don't have the knee pads, but the important part is here when you crash. And of course also my elbows. I slide with this thing. I just don't hit down and start tumbling. And that's an important thing. So if you're thinking about going on the racetrack, make sure you have some sort of metal plating on the outside in the delicate parts. You're gonna need it. But more importantly, you're gonna need to have a chest protector and a back protector too. And that's a feature that you always have to make sure you have. Now, this is the tricky part of having a racing suit. It's pretty hard to take away, but with the years, you eventually learn a way to just pull it out yourself, although it's gonna be pretty tricky. This is a back and chest protector, it's built by Alpine Stars. It's very flexible, it's like having a vest on. It protects my back really good. So, if you're thinking about something, a vest like this can really help everything and you can wear it easily on the street. It doesn't bother you at all. And uh, it's gonna prevent you from remaining on four wheels on a wheelchair. So, these are the main features, but of course we're gonna have to talk also about gloves. When you go down, a lot of times you break fingers on your hands. It's a funny thing, but the pink is the first one that normally gets hit. It's not a case that a lot of racing gloves, like in this case, they do have the pinky attached with the other finger together. So they become harder and they don't snap. These are my racing gloves. They're made out of uh, kangaroo leather and uh, stingray leather in uh, the delicate part. It gives you a stronger protection. They're very good. I like them. Uh, fortunately, I didn't have to test them. <laughs> uh, my other gloves, they got hit uh, in a crash and they were not the same brand, but they did a pretty good job. I have the, always had the plate on the top of the knuckles and the, the pinky, uh, how do you say, solder together with the other finger. So, gloves, they're very important. They're required on the racetrack. They're mandatory, as well as boots. You're gonna have to have boots to go on the racetrack. The main reason is that when you crash, your feet often, they end up under the bike. You don't want to have the bike squeezing your foot down while you are running at 100 miles an hour, not even for a second. Let's say that you go down and your bike clips you for a fraction of a second and then slides away. On that fraction of a second, you just had 200 pounds worth of bike squeezing down your foot on the asphalt that is sliding at 100 miles an hour. Ouch. You're not gonna have a foot anymore, or at least you're gonna see the bones just for that split moment. The boots, they do the job, and uh, I can show you, in my case, 
they worked really well. You can see that they got beat in here, but they prevented me from getting injured and I was able to go back on the track not even an hour later. These are the main things uh, that you need to have. To go on the racetrack, you will have to think about uh, doing some purchases in safety. But this is safety that can be easily transported to the street. So, a good helmet, you have to feel comfortable, you need to feel, be, to feel able to move your head nicely. This is really light, it really makes me feel good. And uh, it's been my lucky charm for uh, this season. So. I'm keeping it as long as I can until the expiration date. The back and chest protector is here. This should be mandatory on the street as well as the helmet. Otherwise, you better off not wear anything and just get it over with. Uh, so keep in mind, get one of these. It's really important. Suit is your choice. You need to find the one that it fits you best. I like this. It worked out good for me. It's light. I like the kangaroo leather. I spoiled myself, I bought another kangaroo leather suit, I like it. As far as boots and gloves, it's on you. Whatever you feel, just make sure that they are safe, that they are well rated, that they have good padding on, uh, on your uh, wrist and uh, that you have the two fingers soldered together. It's important in case you crash because most of the times your pinky goes. Actually, if you think about it, Valentino Rossi broke it twice. No. Anyways. I hope this helps you if you're looking into finding the correct stuff to come on the track. These are going to be a few expenses that you're going to have to consider before going on the track. But if you want to feel safe also while you ride on the street, these are all things that are going to help and eventually one day you're going to be thankful. I had a friend of mine that had a crash on his bike wearing one of my suits actually. He was uh, trying it. A deer cut the road on him and he crashed right in front of his friends they were all laughing on him because you know they were all wearing shorts and t-shirts you know it's cool you know I'm the big dude and I don't need anything well my friend was wearing the suit that day and he definitely saved his life he, he kept sliding on the asphalt for a long time and when he stopped he, did, he was not injured officially speaking he said he was doing 50 miles an hour I saw the damages on that bike on that suit it was worse than this and I crashed with this suit at 100 miles an hour and this is all I have on. He said that he was doing 50 and he did much worse than this. I don't believe it. The important thing is that his life was saved and uh, all his friends they learned from his experience because now they're all going around with the suit. So maybe before you have your own experience or so you see one of your friends having the same kind of experience, why don't you jump on it and get yourself a good suit and a back and chest protector. It's all for your safety. Hope I'll see you soon on the next episode and uh, I don't know when I will be posting but I will try to do it as soon as possible. Bye guys, safety first.